The Royal Navy's Type 45 destroyer HMS Duncan spent 48 hours shadowing the Russian Utiloy class destroyer Vice Admiral Kulikov from the North Sea into the English Channel on October 22, 2025, in an operation that London calls a historic procedural first. A Royal Navy surface combatant executing the mission inside UK national waters while under direct NATO control. That distinction, routine surveillance conducted within a NATO command and control framework on Britain's maritime doorstep, turns an otherwise familiar escort scenario into a notable test of alliance readiness. The brief was unambiguous, maintain contact, keep an uncluttered picture of one of Europe's busiest corridors, and demonstrate that command relationships designed on paper translate cleanly to a congested real-world waterway without creating friction or spectacle. Tasking flowed from Allied Maritime Command in Northwood, which assigned Duncan to hold the track through the notified transit while Allied partners coordinated handovers near Ushant. Dutch and French units contributed to the recognized maritime picture, ensuring continuity as the contact moved along the traffic separation scheme. The choreography prioritized predictability, measured presence at safe distance, concise VHF calls, and disciplined reporting so merchant shipping and coastal authorities experienced no deviation from normal operations. The point was less about the Russian hull than about governance, situational awareness delivered cooperatively, in real time, with legal clarity over who is in charge if conditions deteriorate. That clarity becomes decisive in narrow seas where a misread maneuver or ambiguous radio call can cascade into operational noise. Duncan brought the right toolkit for a saturated electromagnetic environment. The Sea Viper combat system fuses the active Samson multifunction radar with the long-range S-1850M, producing a deep and stable air and surface picture that shrugs off clutter and low-altitude returns. The destroyer's magazine of Aster-15 and Aster-30 interceptors provides area air defense not just for the escort but for adjacent merchant traffic that depends on uninterrupted lanes and predictable airspace management. Less visible, but relevant over a prolonged watch, are reliability upgrades to the ship's integrated electric propulsion. Persistent radar rotations, communications loads, and power-hungry sensors place sustained demands on the generating plant, Resilience here turns into higher confidence that the contact will never slip out of the picture at an awkward moment. When the mission is endurance and discrimination rather than kinetic drama, these engineering margins matter. Airborne enablers broadened the sensor envelope. An embarked Wildcat HMA-2 from 815 Naval Air Squadron extended detection and classification ranges with surface search radar and an electro-optical suite capable of pulling imagery and verifying behavior without closing to intrusive distances. The helicopter's ability to carry lightweight precision weapons, such as Martlet, remained a latent option against fast inshore attack craft, the profile stayed firmly observational throughout. Allied aviation added altitude and angles the surface plot cannot always guarantee, a Royal Netherlands Air Force NH-90 and French Navy assets supported handovers and confirmation runs, knitting their returns into a shared track history that Markham could audit minute by minute. The technique is familiar, multiple sensors, common data standards, quiet frequency discipline, but the setting inside UK waters under Alliance control sharpened the practical lesson for future transits. On the opposite side of this low-key encounter, Vice Admiral Kulikov is a platform designed primarily for anti-submarine warfare, equipped with hull and towed sonars and typically operating Ka-27 helicopters. A channel passage by a Russian warship is not unusual, the intensity comes from the environment, not the visitor. Dense commercial shipping, changeable weather, and proximity to navigational hazards demand a premium on anticipation. The behaviors that reduce risk are prosaic and unglamorous, steady courses, declared intentions, prompt bridge-to-bridge -bridge replies, and an unbroken exchange of positional data inside the recognized corridor. By holding to those habits and letting sensors and procedures carry the weight, the escort becomes a form of traffic management rather than confrontation. The message lands on two audiences at once assurance to shipowners and coastal agencies that the artery is well tended, and a reminder to the transiting warship that its movements are recorded with precision. 
Duncan's role as both sensor and switchboard was central to that assurance. Samson's agility and the S-1850 MS reach support discrimination among civil, allied, and opportunistic returns at very low altitude, the regime where clutter and ducting can degrade less capable systems. With the wildcat feeding back classifications and imagery, the destroyer functioned as a reliable node for the recognized maritime picture, smoothing coordination with French and Dutch units that temporarily shared custody as the contact crossed national responsibilities. Electromagnetic housekeeping, tight emissions control, planned handovers, and an agreed playbook to avoid mutual interference, helped keep the spectrum calm despite heavy use. The virtue of this approach is that it scales. If more contacts had emerged, the same framework could have stacked additional tracks without creating ambiguity around who owned which piece of the sky or sea. The patrol sits within wider alliance patterns. HMS Duncan currently sails with standing NATO Maritime Group 1, while HMS Somerset, a Type 23 frigate, has been conducting maritime security patrols along the Iceland, Faroe, Scotland axis and, when required, supporting approaches associated with the UK's deterrent posture. Somerset's port calls in Torshound and Reykjavik illustrate a dull but decisive truth of maritime security, presence ashore matters almost as much as presence at sea. Local authority engagements, technical briefings, and ship tours reinforce shared expectations about how transits, escorts, and emergent situations should unfold. In practice, this social capital reduces frictions when a real problem arrives, a fishing vessel dead in the water across a busy lane, a drone spotted near a wind farm, or a misfiled notice to mariners that requires rapid common sense. Russia's occasional movements between the Barents, the North Atlantic, and the Mediterranean often blend training, signaling, and collection. NATO's counterpoint is continuous, legally framed surveillance, surface radars and electro-optical sensors, embarked helicopters, AIS crosschecks where applicable, and seamless handovers among British, French, Dutch, and Belgian units along the channel spine. What made this week's evolution notable was Markham's explicit control over a UK ship inside UK waters, a subtle but meaningful test of how the chain of command would function if tensions rose. Interception in this context does not imply coercion. It means proximity control, firm but courteous radio work, and safe spacing that denies drama. The stakes are material, the channel underpins Northern Europe supply chains and overlays a web of subsea cables, energy pipelines, and expanding offshore wind arrays. An orderly audit trail for every third-party transit helps protect that infrastructure by making anomalies stand out sooner and interventions arrive faster. Seen through that lens, the episode is best read as governance rather than theater. The escort demonstrated that alliance tasking can operate inside national waters without distortion or delay, that high-end sensors can maintain a clean air and surface picture in one of the world's busiest corridors, and that partners can exchange custody without losing fidelity. It also underscored the value of quiet engineering gains and procedural discipline, the kinds of investments that do not trend on social media but prevent small frictions from compounding into operational risk. For Moscow, the signal is that transits are observed, attributed, and archived with professional granularity. For coastal states and commercial operators, the takeaway is a promise of continuity, predictable lanes, steady comms, and a shared playbook that converts potential friction into steady flow. In an era when undersea infrastructure and gray zone pressures are increasingly central to maritime security, that combination of visibility and restraint is not just an operational success, it is the strategy.